Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another week of the show. Coming up, we talk about a contract extension for John Moxley. Who is the first member of the Wyatt Six, allegedly? Who were the other members of the Wyatt Six? Allegedly. Speculation. Yeah. And who did it better? Who had a better return, Bray Wyatt or Cody Rhodes? That and some other stuff coming up. Sit back, grab a drink, relax. Another week of the show starts now. Do you, do you feel better? Do you now? like that intro? Well, no, that you we did for up. the first time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he had so many takes. I don't care. Clearly. I'll take it. I'll do twenty takes. I won't take it until it does it right. So what's going on in the wide, wide world of wet wrestling? Oh, we got some good stuff to come to talk about this week. Oh, some great, great things. Yeah. Um, I think we can start off light. Okay. Um, Rene Paquette signed it's... with AEW. Miss John Moxley. Um, this also goes with John Moxley signing a contract extension yeah um, John Moxley signed a five year extension with AEW picking them over the double double E and I think it was a good move for him um, he always said he didn't want to go back to the sports entertainment thing mm -hmm. um, now that Triple H is there it's not even sports entertainment anymore but he definitely, indeed, signed his contract. Um, what do you think? Is it a good move or a bad move? Well, I mean, it's the only move that they have. Like, all their top stars are are a little too volatile. It looks like John Moxley's the only constant. I mean, I, I personally wouldn't sign him in my wrestling company, but it's just me. Kind of did what they had to do. Yeah, I think it was a good move for for them. Um, I think it says a lot that he signed back with them. Like, if he jumped, if he didn't sign with them, he jumped shit back to to the double double E. I think now you're sending a message like, oh, maybe things aren't so good over here, or maybe it's not going so well because of all the backstage shit we hear. But him resigning kind of sends a message that, I don't know, maybe it's not as bad as the media and podcast does paint the picture of, if that makes sense. Maybe, I mean, a little bit. I don't know, it's like you're... <laughs> I guess the best way to put it is like you're dating a girl and um, you hear that they're having so much trouble or you're just telling people about all the trouble you're having in the relationship but then you <laughs> there's this big event and you show up with her and you you guys are doing nothing but laughing and shit and it's like oh not so bad, huh? <laughs> yeah, you guys, like I thought you guys were on the rocks. No, no, we're good. Well, I think the what that was what, a bad one. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, I don't know. I was trying it sounded to help you better. Out, but just I... moving on. Um, it sounded better. I, th I think the, what what needs to be uh, addressed is Moxie's going to be having an active role in the coaching and development there too which I guess it would be a good thing if he was a good wrestler but all he does is the, the those bullshit trash can matches and it's just I don't know well it's funny that you say that because Apparently, a part of his new contract is he can't do 
any more GCW matches. So. Really. And I found it funny. Yeah. So. I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah, he won't be working with GCW anymore. That that just oh, came yeah, out yeah, today. Yeah. Um. I do find it funny that GCW they put out a statement talking about they didn't they didn't know that Moxley signed the contracts like who what do you who cares if you didn't know <laughs> right <laughs> like what are you even talking about right now he's not your <laughs> who are you he's not on your roster he's on AEW's roster like what are you talking about oh we didn't know he's gonna sign a, an extension well, Dave, uh, Dave Meltzer <clears throat> of the uh, Wrestling Observer, he uh, he suggested that there would have been a huge bidding war um, had Moxley not signed. And I just, I don't know. I don't see the WWE getting in, into a huge bidding war. Unless... Unless they were in a position where they just wanted to, to cripple AEW, you know. I don't think they'd be signing him just for Moxley. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think he, they would have liked to have brought him back for... for, like, the, the S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion type shit, but... Like he would, he he would add value to the company for, or I wouldn't know. Maybe I take that back. He doesn't add value. I mean, they're already valuable, but he would add something being back. Like again, we can go back to the shield. Um, it pushes Seth Rollins further down the line, which would be funny, but. <laughs> but I don't know. But he man. signed. I just. I... I don't think they view him as anything special. Who doesn't view him as anything special? The, WWE? Right. Yeah, I don't think WWE views Moxley as, as anything special. I don't or think they did. I think now more so. I guess, but he's not... I mean, I think he's worse. His matches are worse, at least. I thought he was a better wrestler well, in, uh, as John, as Dean Ambrose. Well, I guess that's a... Yeah, his matches aren't for everybody, but, you know, he's... For what it's worth, he's the face of AEW. That's true. Like, he's the top guy in that company. Why would you come back to go to a different company and then not be the top guy? Right. Like, you can say... As much success as they have is on you, and if they're not as big, that's all on you as well. Like, you kind of control all of that. So, it would be a good, it's a good position to have him in. Um, with him signing, we did get R Renee Paquette, his wife. She also signed with AEW. Oh boy. I know you. You don't sound too excited about it. Um, she's obviously not there to wrestle. Um, I uh, think she's good at her job. So she, she was feuding with one um, with somebody on Twitter. So there's got to be an uh, intergender, excuse me, an inter intergender uh, tag match at some point. No, I bet she's not wrestling. <laughs> she's not wrestling. We'll she's see. not there to wrestle. We'll see. Um. I think that it was a big get for AEW. Um, I know you're not excited about it, but she had... There was, like, talks of her going to, like, Good Morning America, ESPN, Fox. Like, <clears throat> there were pretty big companies that wanted her to come do what she does. Okay. Whatever that even... <laughs> Whatever that even, just like her interview, I don't know, <laughs> skills. So, her signing with AEW, that 
I think that was a big thing for them. Um, it also adds some legitimacy to what they do. How's that? Because she's so prestigious or heralded at, at her gig. So she got good references? Is that... <laughs> well, no. Like I said, like ESPN wanted her to come... Um, Good Morning America wanted her to come and Fox and just like big places wanted her to come host their shows because I mean, she's good at it. Okay. I, mean, um, I can't really break down <laughs> exactly what it is because <laughs> I'm not like in the journalism thing so but what I do know is yeah you have these places, these big corporations, these big companies wanting her, not even for wrestling stuff, so, like, I don't know, I think it was good for them. I guess we'll see, I I, um, I just don't see She was another one. She was an okay, she's another um, one that I mean, she was an okay commentator, but... Uh, at the end of the day, like or by the end, to me she she kind of sounded like that female commentator from ESPN too, that just had that nasally robotic voice. Just, I don't know. I don't even know who that is. I don't watch ESPN too. <laughs> <laughs> she might not even be there anymore. Like, who's watching ESPN 2? What good reason do you have to turn ESPN 2 on? College football. Oh, because you're watching, like, North Dakota State? I think, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. North Dakota State or uh, Michigan State or some state. Yeah, the real teams ain't playing on no ESPN too. You got ESPN, ABC, Fox, primetime games, and you know, going all the way to ESPN two. When's the last time Alabama was on ESPN two? Anyway, don't look that up because we got to move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, some more signees that went to AEW that I guess need mention. We have. Maria Canellis, um, her husband, Matt Canellis. Oh, is it boy. Matt or, or Mark? I think it's Matt. Who cares? And then, and then we have Matt Taven. I don't know anything about Matt Taven. I don't know anything about the Canellis dude. I know Maria Canellis did Playboy, so <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> um, um, but. Her husband did a uh, Impact and uh, New Japan. He's okay. He's not great. Oh, there you go. He was uh, on Impact, so he was in front of five people. And they were in WWE briefly. Oh, you know what? They were. He had that brief stint, yeah, and they did that greatest love thing. Yeah. Like they were so in love, and then she. Um, she got pregnant or something and made him do like made him fight her battles or something like that yeah but... like she, she turned her she turned him into his, her bitch cause she got pregnant <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I remember him now so yeah they signed with AEW as well um I don't know there's not much to really be said there um, I do think it's funny though that they were rumored to be going back to WWE and then now they're signed with AEW so that was just straight out <laughs> hey why don't you come here instead and they picked AEW over WWE so it was just I guess that's the, the main thing to take away from it Yeah. All 
All right, well, well <laughs> we will assume you have nothing to add oh, to that. Oh, I'm sorry. And... Um, I... <laughs> My bad. <laughs> um, I can't see what value that Renee really adds, aside from, you know, a pleasant voice to listen to. Um, Maria and her husband, their shtick is, is long, long in the tooth at this point, so... Um, they also signed Paige, too, which, yay, that's great. AEW really making waves. Well, the whole Paige thing was funny. So, yeah, they did sign Paige. Um, the reason that was funny is because they cleared her after all this time where she couldn't get cleared in WWE. She goes to AEW, and they cleared her for in-ring action. And then, if you go on Twitter, you got all these people with this these their hidden medical degrees mm-hmm. putting in their two cents about how she's not... She shouldn't be wrestling. Right. And how AEW is... Um, or she couldn't get cleared with WWE, so she signed with AEW just so she can get cleared. Because the doctor there, Dr. Sampson, is a shady doctor. Dr. Sampson? Yeah, I that's want to Dr. Sampson. <laughs> but it's, it's just funny that all these people have these medical degrees and they're just putting their opinion how, you know... It's wrong that she's cleared, and she's not. She's not. She shouldn't be cleared. She's still hurt. Well, it's like, oh, I didn't know you were a medical professional. Person on Twitter with a hundred, with nine, <laughs> nine digits in your name. Well, with as careful as Tony has been with um, the Daniel Bryan injury. I can't imagine that he would let Paige wrestle unless she was completely clear. So I don't I, I don't know. I don't think it would be a gimmick. I think it was a little odd that he didn't want to talk about it. So that kind of led me to believe that she wasn't clear and they just kind of made it seem like she was there. They were teasing that she was going to wrestle again, but then kind of like WWE did, just use her as a backstage role. But right, I mean, but it's Paige, so like I don't understand what the big deal with her is. Like I never thought she was good as a wrestler. Um, her little sticking her tongue out. This is my house as she's getting her ass beat all the time. Just just. It gets old. Um, she looks like a little girl in amongst women. Like with her body type, she just looks out of place. Well, she was, and I'm not the only she, one. Like Nineteen <laughs> when she so, was in WWE, she was nineteen. I don't know. She like she's not old. <laughs> But there's some 19-year-olds that look fine. She looks like a fucking child. She looks like a pudgy little Cabbage Patch doll. <clears throat> Maybe pudgy funny is not the you, word. <laughs> funny that you say that. Yeah. Because she did have a Twitter battle <laughs> over the week. <laughs> yeah, she... And that's the perfect segue. Yeah, apparently I'm not the only one that has has issues with her. She's already been called like overrated, and um, she's already taken cheap shots at WWE, which people are taking ex- exception to as well. Oh, yeah, that's just the tribalism of the wrestling community, right? But so she went on Twitter, um, and she put out a tweet that said. Dirt Sheets Podcasters, that's us. And an old man that loves to have his voice heard, 
even if it's full of shit, loves to loves to talk about me. You're welcome for clicks and views. She went on Twitter and put that tweet out. Um, and again, podcasters, that's us. That's why it's relevant. Now, I think Jim Cornette. Huh? Yeah. I was gonna say, I think, I think this show uh, addressed that that comment, didn't it? Didn't we? No. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yes, we did. <laughs> I didn't know what you were doing there. Yes, we did. <laughs> so we we put out a reply. <laughs> so, so yeah, I was on Twitter. I saw this message. I thought I would put out a reply. I told her that... Um, I tell her thank you for the views, but it's not getting as much views as the CM Punk stuff. Jim Cornette took that a little bit further. Um, now I didn't see his tweet before, or his response or whatever before I said that. I no, just... I'm I'm the Jim Cornette fan, so if anybody right. would be stealing so, from Jim Cornette, it would be me. Yeah, I just saw the I just saw the tweet. I saw she said podcasters mm-hmm. thought I'd throw our name in there, get us some some cheap pop, and um, so Cornette came back and said, "Thank you for the you're welcome, but the last clip we spoke about you in um, has yet to outperform out per, golly has yet to <laughs> outperform Jeff Jarrett's locker room fight with." Dandy Jack, whoever that is, Donovan, in 1973. So please try to be more interesting. That's what Cornette responded. Um, which is kind of funny that I kind of, and the lack of words, said the same thing. Yeah. That is... And I wasn't even saying it as a diss. I was just saying, hey, <laughs> yeah, we're talking about you. It's kind of what we're here for. <laughs> like, I, if this show is about talking about wrestling news, and you are a wrestler, guess what? You might get talked about. Right. I just don't understand why you wouldn't want your fans to to talk about you, even if it's bad. Like, the fans are talking about the sport. It's just like uh, uh, NFL fans; they talk shit about their team. So and so can't play. Yada yada yada. Um, fandoms of of like movies and comic books. They you think they don't shit on on bad stuff? Like if it's bad, real fans call that shit out. Yeah, I mean it's it's actually helping to point out the bad stuff. Right. If it's constructive. Of course, you don't just want to shit on it for the sake of shitting on it, unless it's um, Quincy Elliott. But (laughs) Sunny Kiss, (laughs) or Sunny Kiss, or anyway, (laughs) you get the point from those two. (laughs) Oh my God! Speaking of speaking of Quincy Elliott, did you watch NXT? Sure didn't. So, Quincy Elliott had a segment on NXT. Oh, no. Where, I don't know, he was he was talking to some dude backstage um, about an upcoming match. And then the guy smacks his ass. And Quincy Elliott makes a sound effect and then says something to the guy about smacking his ass I don't know and it was at this point I realized that I can no longer watch NXT (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh this this and then there was also like a they did some kind of blowjob shtick um do you know the team pretty deadly uh yeah they they kind of look like uh the Nitro, Eminem. Yeah, so they're playing homosexual characters, 
And oh. I don't know that. I don't know that it was that. I thought they were flying. Okay. Yeah. So they're playing homosexual characters. They did a segment where you have one guy down on his knees, um, and the camera is like showing the other guy's back. He's holding his hair up, and he's like. <laughs> And he's making sound effects. And he's like, oh, yes. He's like, oh, yes, spit on it. And then you hear the other guy spitting and, like, making noises. And then the pen... Oh, this is not a joke. And the camera turns around, and he's shining... He's shining the dude's belt. I'm like, what is this shit that I'm watching right now? I was even to look. I was willing to look past that one, but then you do that Quincy Elliott shit. I was like, okay, this show's done. <laughs> you do this both on one episode. <laughs> yeah, I. The the one time I saw the NXT, uh, there was just nothing but tag teams, so I kind of lost interest. I'm glad that I'm not going to miss anything because that's, I don't know. Isn't this supposed to be, how can you not have blood? <laughs> but you can have dick sucking jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, one's, you know. You can't have blood in a, <laughs> you, can't, you can't have blood in a cage match. In a fight pit. Yes, but you can have dick sucking jokes on yeah. Hulu. But, uh, yeah, whatever, man. But you know, they're just trying to guarantee that no one watches the show anymore. So. I'm not, I won't. And they <laughs> and they've done a good job. So <laughs> until it changes, I'm not watching NXT anymore. So you'll never get. Yeah. <laughs> For all of you who hit the subscribe button, and if you haven't, you should. You'll never get an NXT review out of us on this show. Nope. <laughs> Unless it changes and it's good, then maybe there will be a review. But well, there I'm not going to be some personnel changes. Like if they go back to old black and gold. Okay, now you might get a review, like because well, they... I'll be watching it every week, but. This shit? No. It shouldn't even be on TV. Well, they have to get rid of Pretty Deadly. No matter what. <laughs> and I, I was just thinking, can you imagine? You, you, you know, you, you watch... You watch WWE as a little kid. You watch some match, and you're like, oh... This is so awesome. I want to do this as a career. You train hard all of your life. You go to your wrestling schools. You're top of your class. You do well enough that you finally make it to one of the WWE tryouts. And then you kick ass in the tryouts. And you make it to NXT. And like, wow. This was a boyhood dream of mine was to be in the WWE. And now I'm here. I'm in the tryouts, or, you know, I'm in NXT, and they they call you in and say, hey, you got your first match. I want you to come in and, and uh, you know, it's your first match, and you're not known, so you're going to have to lose. But you're like, you know what, that's okay. I'm getting my, getting my work out there. People are going to see me. Maybe I blow people away. And you get your assignment. You go up there. You go in the ring. And you're matched up against Quincy Elliott. And you've worked your whole life <laughs> to get to this WWE. And that's what you got to go out and job to. <laughs> what about working your whole life just so you can get into a position where you're in a skit where you pretend to suck some dude's dick? <laughs> Spit you're seeing more caught up on that one. Because <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> That's right up there with um, 
Remember when Ed, Edge and Lita had like their X-rated whatever the fuck? Oh, the live sex celebration. Yeah, like what does that have to do with wrestling? Well, that didn't even show anything. Well, yeah, that was kind but of. But I, I get, I get it. Like, yeah, it's just one of those cringy moments that are, you're just waiting for it to be over. Or the unnecessarily long uh, fuck scene with um, Triple H and Katie Vick. You're putting this up there with Katie Vick? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Spit on it. <laughs> Spit on it. I couldn't yeah. believe what I was hearing. Yeah. Spit on it. You're telling me? <laughs> oh, Katie. You're stiff. You always yeah, were stiff as hearing. a board. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it can rank up there with one of those just worst moments of wrestling history. Yeah, and the only reason that it's not is because nobody has the balls to fucking call that nasty shit out. And it happened on NXT, so... Not that's many people saw that, too. <sighs> Spit on it. But yeah, that's why you don't... <laughs> that's why no one watches NXT anymore. Um... To move on. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing we went over this stuff so we wouldn't have these long, awkward pauses. Well, I'm just saying, I don't know a, a good way to segue out of that one. So, oh, okay. <laughs> so we may have a teaser, and I don't know where you got this information from, but I'm going to tell you it's wrong. <laughs> but I'm going to let you say it anyway. We may you know have what? got a teaser of who <laughs> the first member of the Wyatt, Bray Wyatt Six is. Uh, or why is six? Yeah. And the teaser that is floating around for some reason is Colin Delaney. Colin Delaney is apparently the uh, the first revealed member of the uh, Wyatt family, allegedly. Now this is from uh, Sportskedia, and they do report it as a rumor, so. I don't want to be in a position where I'm, I'm claiming this is fact. But, um, yeah. he uh, It was also confirmed by Perched on the top rope, which... Uh, they Are these credible sources? Sports Gita is. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to vouch for Perched on the top rope. Sounds like someone in their freaking basement. Well, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, but at least we don't claim to have sources. I guess uh, I'm gonna start claiming to have sources. Well, apparently, Delaney himself reportedly confirmed that he would be directly linked to Bray Wyatt's new faction. So, even even he said it. Well. Um, I would say that he is trolling. Yeah. If he did say that. And more so, maybe he did say that. Maybe it's like a backstage thing that he's like helping with the the creative of it or something. He's not <laughs> going to be part of that group. Okay. Because you don't want the group... Like, that's... There's no better way to... I don't know, to kill the momentum of the group before it even gets started than having Colin Delaney as one of the members. Well, I mean, you don't know how he's going to be presented, though. There's no way you can present him to make him look like a believable source for to be in the Wyatt Six. I don't even know what the group, like, I don't even know the direction of the group yet, but I can say he doesn't fit whatever that direction is. 
I don't know. Do you think that, uh, remember when Billy Kidman joined the flock? Like, do you think he would have been anybody's first choice? Oh, that's different. How is that different? Because he, I don't know, you can just dye your hair black and, you know, start wearing dark clothes and then you can be emo. That's what Delaney can do. No, he can't. Yeah. He just, be a he's, creepy character. No, he just grows his beard out and dyes his hair black and cuts the sleeves off of his shirt and he's he's with Bray Wyatt now. Well, he's definitely... Uh, I don't think he's got the look. You know, a lot of those... Let's think about, like, the the former Wyatt family. You got... Mm-hmm. You got Luke Harper. You got he's Eric awesome. Rowan. You got yeah. um, Braun Strowman. Yeah. These are all, like, big, intimidating-looking people. Mm-hmm. Then you're going to go from that to Colin Delaney? <laughs> Like, get well, the fuck in, out of here. Well, keep uh, if this was a situation where it was like, you know, the Wyatt family was originally just the three, the Luke, Rowan, and, and Bray. So, I mean, if, right. they, if it was a situation like that, then yeah, I agree with you. But we're talking about six individuals. So I think, I think when you have so many people like that, that you can kind of be a little bit more creative with the the body types but you don't have to get like the bruisers you can get a high flyer you yeah. can get a woman you can get a you know it's kind of like the NWO flight it's kind of like DX yeah I guess that's what you're saying but it's still I don't think it's going to be him <laughs> <laughs> specifically him um, now another person who's teased to be joining the Wyatt Six is Eva Marie. And again, I think yeah. that's just another troll job. Yeah. Um, so she she did a tweet and on the tweet it said if I make this shot um, she's holding Lily the doll, the doll and she says if I make this shot then I'm going back to WWE with the hashtag of Wyatt Six. And then she she throws the doll towards a trash can and then you see the doll hit the backboard and then as it's going in it fades to black well it, it, you see the little subliminal uh, firefly thing too yeah so you don't technically see it going in but if you're if you were to put your money on it it's probably that shot went in so that's her teasing that she's going back to WWE 1 and 2 she's going to be a part of the Wyatt 6 um, but I, I really think it was just her trolling well the best the best thing about Eva Marie's thing was the fan reaction because they uh, they they were not necessarily excited about the uh, the prospect of her joining the Wyatt family yeah um, and that's why one... it was so great that she did it <laughs> yeah, one tweet said Triple H has run out of exciting returns. He has to rely on Eva Marie. <laughs> <laughs> Triple H, please don't bring back Eva Marie. Eva Marie is going to be part of the Wyatt Six. Oh, God. Uh, no, Triple H, I'm begging you on my hands and knees. Please don't do it. So, I don't know. I think she's less believable than, well... Yeah, I think she's less believable than Colin. She definitely... I think they're equally not as not believable as right. of joining the group. Um, now, one person who is believable to join the group and who is reported on being a comeback being imminent, let's use that word, imminent, is Bo Dallas. Bo, 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 bo. So he is. Um, I think this was from Meltzer. He reported that um, Bo Dallas is coming back. He's rumored to come back. 
Oh no, this is Brian Alvarez, sorry. Same thing. So, that's, um, in real life, that's Bray Wyatt's brother. Mm -hmm. Um, Mike Rotunda is their dad. Uh, Now he's, yeah, Mr. IRS. Or an R. Shyster. He was also called Wall Street in WCW. Oh yeah, that was a bad gimmick. (laughs) It was the same gimmick as IRS. Yeah, but it was bad. Okay. I mean, it's because he, didn't he wrestle in a suit when he was Wall Street? He wrestled in a a, a tie and a a button up shirt that was uh, that had no sleeves, so it was like a a white dress shirt, but sleeveless and black pants. I think he had suspenders too. Yeah, he oh. had suspenders. So he looked like a you know he looked like a fucking yuppie, just without sleeves. <laughs> Well, I think I read somewhere that he hated that gimmick. Oh. Um, but he's been posting on Twitter, like, him, uh, him Bray, and Bo, like, all them together. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of, like, amping up those spec the speculation that Bo's going to be part of the Wyatt Six, which would make a good fit. It'd be interesting to since see Since they are brothers. Yeah. I don't think they've really... I know the B-team um, had a little program with with Bray and Matt Hardy when they were the deleter of worlds. Deleters of worlds. Um, yeah. But as far as Bray and Bo one-on-one, I don't know if there's a whole lot of... a whole lot of uh, exposure to that. Yeah, I don't remember them ever going one on one. Um, maybe they have. I just don't remember it. And or maybe it happened in NXT. Right. But I do remember a couple of times that they were like opposed to each other in tag team matches. So. Okay. So they have wrestled. It's just not yeah one on one. Yeah. Okay. But he's rumored to be part of the. The Wyatt Six, um, and his return is imminent. Uh, one other person who's kind of he teased at him, or he he was teased to be a part of this this group, is um, someone in NXT. His name is Grayson Waller. I don't know why I had to do it in an Australian accent, but it's because he's Australian. <laughs> Uh, my name is Grayson Waller. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, he. They're not gonna do it again because I nailed it. <laughs> Just yeah. fine there. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, <clears throat> he is also speculated to be part of this. I'm not sure who that is. Grayson Waller. Uh, not important, but. He's just know that he's in NXT. So if he did be part of this group, that means he would be called up. Um, now he also he had a tweet that was kind of funny. He he bought one of the lanterns from like WBShop.com. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I just said the whole thing like that, but that's here and over there. He bought one of the lanterns and he did a video where he was holding the lantern and um, he said let me in (laughs) and then he just started laughing (laughs) (laughs) like oh you thought I was going to be you thought I was going to be in the Wyatt Six because the guy was wearing a Hawaiian shirt (laughs) yeah I think that was the buzzard yeah so that's why he was getting speculated because Buzzard was wearing a Hawaiian shirt and that's what he usually wears on TV. I don't know, man. They got some, a lot of these uh, internet detectives. Yeah, these 
these cretins on the internet, they'll, they'll surely figure this out. Um, I don't know how far I'm trying to figure it out. I'm kind of more so wanting to be, like, surprised when it happens. Like, so, you know, I'm kind of staying away from who's in the group. Like, if I see a video, who's in the group? <laughs> I mean, you click on ours, of course, but <laughs> if I personally, if I see that kind of video, I don't click on it because I don't want to know. Like, I want to be surprised. I think um, it depends. Like, if it, it... See, this... I think the Colin Delaney guy looks more believable than this Grayson guy. Well... The Grayson was just a speculation because of his shirt. Right. Like, that's um, what we're basing that off of. But going back to the, the surprise thing, I don't... I think if it's... Like, it, hypothetically, let's say The Undertaker comes out of under, uh, uh, retirement or something to join the Wyatt Six. Yeah, that's a big surprise. I, I think I would want to... I'd want to, you know, experience that as it happens. But if it's a, it's a situation where Colin Delaney or somebody I've never fucking heard of uh, has joined, I, I don't know. I think that's interesting. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a fun ride. We'll see. I mean, I'm... The Fiend left a really bad taste in my mouth. As far as... Bray's new theme? The the Fiend. Oh. All that shit, that left a really bad taste in my mouth. I really like the cult shit. Um, you know, the Swamp Cult. Hillbilly, Redneck, Jack, Fuck you in the Ass. <laughs> shit. That was great. Um... But then the spooky supernatural shit, and just seeing these 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 poor wrestlers being put in a position where they have to pretend that it's real. Um, I I didn't buy that, so I'm kind of I'm not at the edge on the edge of my seat, but I'm I'm interested. Well, he's definitely. Um, one of the bigger draws in the company right now, which is good for him. Yeah, he does deserve. It. I mean, I, if if they would have booked him a little bit more solidly, he'd, he'd be a bigger star than what he is. Now it just seems like it's, um, they're really letting him do his own thing. Yeah, like, and we'll see if, we'll see if the, his own thing was, like, the fiend bullshit with putting the mandible claw on Seth Rollins when he throws up blood, or, uh he'll not have the handcuffs that Vince ha had him in and he can actually you know do something special versus cheesy well, I hope it's good I'm really a fan do. I'm actually a fan of the supernatural in wrestling so I don't know I guess it's just different shows for different folks Um, now the the real question we have here is we have two major returns that happen we had the the Cody Rhodes return um, just to give you like a quick recap he was he returned at Wrestlemania yeah um, faced Seth Rollins they did that build up where Seth Rollins was in the ring he didn't know who his opponent was going to be. There was speculation that it was going to be Cody Rose, but no one like had a definitive answer. And then the the lights go out for <laughs> for the 
moments, and then all the fireworks hit, goes up the ramp, fireworks there, then you hear wrestling has more than one royal family. And out comes Cuddy Rhodes. So you have that big return. And then you have Bray's big return. Um, the whole White Rabbit thing. Mm-hmm. And then we get to Extreme Rules. Um, he gets the main event, main event segment. And they're showing all the Firefly Funhouse characters. They show the Firefly Funhouse. Um, and then he comes out in his mask. He says, I'm here. Or I'm back, whatever he said. It blows out the candle. And we go off the air that way. So we have the two major returns. Which do, return do you think was better? Well, I guess it kind of depends on what you're looking at. Um, Cody Rhodes has actually wrestled twice. Um, Bray Wyatt has yet to do so. So, I mean, just from that aspect of it, we, I mean, we've, we've actually seen Cody in action. Um, we've seen Bray briefly in a mask and do his little lighter, or his lantern gimmick. Um, and then he had that little brief promo on SmackDown. But that's, that's really it. I think that right. the Bray Wyatt stuff was obviously more engaging and clever. Um, and a lot, <clears throat> a lot more anticipated. But from a pure wrestling standpoint, it, it has to be Cody, right? I mean, isn't that that's why we're here? Yeah, I think it was of the two. I would say Bray Wyatt. Um, yes, Cody Rose has wrestled. Um, so that, I guess I would say I'm not taking it like what have they done so far. I'm just more so like the return itself, what went into the return. Because, um, you know, Cody Rhodes was an executive in AEW. Mm-hmm. And he kind of left abruptly uh, at AEW, and I don't think it was ever a question um, of him going to back to WWE. Because I mean, where where the fuck else is he gonna go, Shikara? Yeah. So <clears throat> he 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 was working on a no contract. Thing, or, sorry, he was working AEW without a contract. He did the ladder match without a contract. Um, he said that himself. Right, and then, uh, yeah, he disappears. Everybody thinks, oh, this is obviously just a storyline, and then he shows up in WWE. And then you also kind of have to look at the I way mean, he, he left too, because he he wrote that really long letter, kind of shitting on the creative, and like he didn't necessarily leave on the best of terms. Well, on the other hand, Bray was just abruptly let go. I mean, yeah, you had the reports later on that Vince kind of soured on him and just really couldn't think of anything else to do with him and decided to cut bait, but there wasn't really any huge drama with his, his release. He didn't really publicly say anything beyond just a couple of cryptic tweets. Yeah, and then, I mean, some stuff started coming out afterwards about him being difficult to work with, yada right. yada yada. But I, I do think that the Bray return was better. Um, just the fact that everything that went into it, the the QR code, and we're mm-hmm. not talking about like again what they've done since they've returned because Cody's wrestled Bray hasn't even though Cody's only wrestled Seth Rollins really right he's had a match with the Miz but uh, when whatever <laughs> um, but we've seen him in the ring like we don't know we don't know like anything about how Bray Wyatt's going to be portrayed um, obviously he's not going to be the fiend 
Um, it looks like he's he's planning on wearing that mask. So I don't like how's that tie into it? Is is he going to be over the top with the stupid? Well, I guess that goes back into what the what they're doing. But um, we we just don't know. We don't know what Bray we're going to get. I think I think that's my biggest hesitation. We don't know what we have. We just know we have Bray Wyatt. Yeah. And that's the the fun of it all. Like, we don't know yeah, what is true. going on. Like, no, there's no direction or anything here. It's just like, we're, we're in for a ride. But it's also... It's going to go... Um, uh-huh. It's also WWE, though, so you know, like, <laughs> that ride could lead you off of a cliff pretty tremendously. Like, you know, like, the payoff's not going to be worth it. Well, I think it's changed with Triple H in charge. Has like, it? This isn't, the, this isn't the Vince McMahon... Yeah, Triple H hasn't done anything yet that's, like... What the hell? <laughs> as far as building something up and then, you know, just it just being a complete letdown. I don't know, man. He like they still have the really long ass promos. They still have like the rematches. Like I, uh, I, I can't see a difference right now, and maybe it has to be a slow burn. Maybe it takes time for um, the changes that Triple H wants to implement, and I get that, but I don't see anything drastically different than what Vince would have done. Maybe that's just me. Yeah. I mean, there's slight differences. On which we don't have enough time to <laughs> talk about today. Oh, that's but... convenient. <laughs> we could do a whole show on the differences. Well, but yeah. one final, <laughs> if we could talk about one final thing, because this is starting to come up now, um, and talking about the returns just kind of ties into it. So... Previous to Bray Wyatt showing back up, the general consensus of the wrestling community, or whoever he asked, was that it was going to be Cody Rhodes that's going to take down Roman Reigns. But now that Bray's showing back up, it's kind of thrown a monkey wrench into that. So my question to you is... Who do you think should be the one to take down Roman Reigns? Bray Wyatt, Cody Rhodes, <laughs> someone else? Well, it kind of depends. Like, are they going to keep... Are they going to keep the brand split, or are they planning on still keeping two belts? Or are they going to unify the belt? If they're going to unify the belt, that's a completely different kind of scenario. If they're going to have two belts, then that's an easy... Because... Um, Bray Wyatt's on SmackDown anyway. And, um... Who is the other person? Cody Rhodes. Is he... Cody Rhodes. Is he on SmackDown? I thought he was on Raw. He's on Raw. So, I mean, there you go. Cody Rhodes gets the red belt. Bray Wyatt gets the blue belt. Um... If it's... I mean, if they plan on having one belt to fight over, then... I think it's up to up to the fans. I think they need to work in the ring. And to your point, you just said that that Cody Rhodes has only wrestled Seth Rollins, so he needs to he needs to kind of establish himself a little bit more. Uh, he's got a his storyline is built in, while Bray is just just a a lump of clay right now. So I mean, mm-hmm. kind of have to see where. It, how it goes is Bray going to be the type of character that doesn't even need a title um yeah I could see him being that kind of character 
that doesn't need a title. But yeah, I just think it's kind of funny that it was all okay. Cody Rhodes is the guy. He's going to be the heir apparent. He's the one that's going to take down Roman Reigns. Right. But now that Bray has come back, that's <clears> kind <throat> of like throwing the monkey wrench into things. Well, I'll give it some time. He'll. Uh, another thing is kind of like when Braun Strowman come ba- came back. Like Braun's just another dude now. Well, he's going to be facing the giant Omos. Yeah. And your six star classic. We'll see what happens. If it was a great Claw Ali, I'd be I'd be excited. <laughs> no, the Omos is just as bad, so you got something to look forward to there. I thought he was good. The great Claw Ali? No, Omos. No. Oh. <laughs> he's seven foot four, of course it's bad. Okay. <laughs> All those guys are bad. Giant Gonzalez too. He was bad too. It's like seven feet. You're okay. You're decent. You can be Mike Awesome or The Undertaker. Or... Mm-hmm. But you go past seven feet. Now you're bad. <laughs> okay. It's like that's the cutoff. Hmm. So who's a uh... Who do you want to see? Um, I still think, oddly, I still think it should be Cody Rhodes. Um, and okay. some of that goes into what you said. I don't think the character of Bray Wyatt needs a title. And you're going to kind of book yourself into a corner because we don't need to see him losing anytime soon. Nope. So, if he's... And you can't... He just came back, so you can't, like, just thrust him into a title match. This is not that those days anymore. It's like someone comes back one week and they're already getting title matches. Yeah, he's not that long. Um, so, I, was, I still think they should do Cody. Um, but I think more than ever they should think about splitting the titles you won't even have this conversation if they split the titles <laughs> but they're only being one champion for you know to go around and now we have to have that kind of a conversation I just well personally I don't think they should have the brand split because one like you got you got Rey Mysterio showing up on you got 60 year old Rey Mysterio showing up on both Raw and Smackdown same thing with the... Oh, the, you didn't hear? He's, he's smacked yeah, down yeah, only yeah. now. Yeah, I know. He ran away from his son. Yeah. That That's... Instead, instead of whooping his son's ass like a man, he ran away from him. He wanted to quit his job. Yeah, he didn't get the chancla. And we're supposed to... We're supposed to cheer for him. He did not get the chancla. No. But, um, Sami Zayn is on both, uh, uh, SmackDown and Raw, so, I mean, you don't have, clearly they don't have enough stars or people that they want to use up their television time with, so I just think it's silly to have a brand split. Fair enough. But yeah, if they do keep, if they keep the brand split, then I think Cody should definitely get one or both of the titles. Um, I don't even know if Bray should get a title off of the fact that he doesn't really need a title. Like his story is more than a title right now. Right. This whole white six thing coming together. Um <sighs> And I know people want to see, like, this whole Wyatt Six start feuding with the bloodline, but we don't need to shoot our wads already. Like, right. you know, there's there's time for that still. Well, let's wait. Let's let's see who the Wyatt Six is first. Yeah, if it's Colin Delaney, it's definitely not. <laughs> That's another reason it's not going to be Colin Delaney. you got to yeah. have him 
going against Roman Reigns it'd be believable can you or imagine, Solo Sokoa can you imagine if it's just uh, Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas is the only like legitimate Wyatt six people like the rest is like Liv Morgan Eva Marie yeah ruined and then and that's the thing though think, WWE could do that I don't think Bray would have come back if that was the case like cause he knows what he wants to do with his character but he, he might think it's a good a... idea no he didn't he might you don't know I think I think he knows wrestling well enough to know that Eva Marie and his group is not a good thing. Maybe they're really close. Or maybe he can, maybe he's like got some kind of ego on him where he thinks he can make it into a good thing. <laughs> like, I don't care who you give me, man. <laughs> I'll turn him into a star. Because I got the world, whole world in my hands, man. <laughs> What? What are you saying? <laughs> I'm doing Bray. Bray Ramon? No, I'm doing Bray. Oh. Like when he was the Swamp Swamp Bray. Hey, man. I got the whole world in my hands, man. Oh, <laughs> it matter who you said, <laughs> man. It doesn't have, It doesn't matter who you give me, man. I could turn him into a star. <laughs> Anyway, I guess that's it for tonight. Yeah, I think we're we, we it's moseying time. I did I did okay with the Grace and Waller, but yeah, you can't win them all. Yeah. And with that, we should bid y'all an adieu and a good night. Yes. And have a good rest of your nights. Good night. Or everybody. morning, or whenever you're listening. <laughs>